Okay, uh, so I just wanted to show you this little guy right here. Um, it's um, a homemade Raspberry Pi laptop. It's uh, in this waterproof and dustproof case box thing. Um, and uh, there you can see the Raspberry Pi. And of course there's a lot of mess inside here, but yeah, we'll take a closer look at that. So, uh, it just opens up like this. And here it is. This is what it looks like. One problem that I had to solve was uh, the screen. Uh, it, there's nothing to hold it, hold it in place. So when you open it up, it just goes backwards like this and it's very hard to use a laptop that way. So the solution to that problem became um, this thing that I'm gonna pull out here right now. Here, and I'll just put the keyboard back in place, just like that. I, I was kind of lucky when, uh, with the size of this when I ordered this keyboard from eBay and it just happened to just fit perfectly in to the size of the box, but um, Unfortunately, there's not enough space for everything to, you can see the, the, the edges of these buttons and yeah, the keyboard have to be kind of laying upon them. But um, now you have to excuse me for a bit because I have to put this thing on here um, to hold the screen up and I can't do that uh, while holding the camera. Okay, so here it is. Um, this is, of course, um, what holds the screen in place and it can be adjusted. You can see this kind of hook right there just be pulled up and down to whatever position you want to put it in. So before we turn it on, um, I'm thinking of just showing you what's underneath here. So this is the inside of the Raspberry Pi laptop. It's probably not, not the smartest way to kind of solve this, to just put all sorts of cables upon each other and just a whole mess <laughs> like this. Um, but it was pretty hard to find another solution for it inside such a small box. I mean, it is kind of almost just just enough space for all this inside here, and so I had to, yeah, I'd tape it in place and glue it and whatnot. So uh, it's powered from a power bank right here. So the operating system of the Raspberry Pi, as we all know, is held uh, is being booted from SD card, micro SD card, and so if you can see right here, I can kind of it's it's very hard to to get your fingers down here to pull out the, the Raspberry Pi or the, the card, the, the SD card in the Raspberry Pi. So I had to kind of make a solution where I could easily do that from the top here. So this is an extender. Uh, I think it's Ubuntu, which is installed on it right now. And here's a little box. It's just like loose in here, but it's it's a box with it's another SD card. And this is Raspbian on that one. Most of the time I'm just using Ubuntu because I, I don't know that the graphical user interface is just much cleaner and easier to use, I think, but I'm not very experienced with Linux <laughs> at all. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this one back in and we're gonna try to boot it up. Just gonna check the battery. Okay, so I'll just push the button right there and you can see that it's fully charged. So there are two buttons here. The first one powers the Raspberry Pi. The second one powers the screen and after putting this together, I figured out that there is some weirdness going on because after I powered on the Raspberry Pi and the screen, I can then uh, turn this button back to the center so that it's off and the Raspberry Pi powers the screen all by itself, even though it is a screen which needs uh, an external power source. Uh, I don't know what, I think it's down to this because it's a touch screen. So I think it's down to the, touch screen cable going down here. So, and this is of course audio out or sound. So you can plug a headphones in there or whatever. This is where you can put the charger in like that and it's gonna charge. Weird thing is that it can't, it can't be used and while charging, uh, it's just, it's very weird. I'm gonna show you that later, but it's, it's um, it keeps powering on and off and behaving very strangely. Okay, so let's turn it on. So it's the Raspberry Pi and the screen. And then, yeah. So there it is. That is the familiar Raspberry Pi boot screen. So there you can see Ubuntu. 
So it takes a while to to boot it up. Um, I guess that's just down to it being a Raspberry Pi and it always takes some time to do, but um, I guess it's coming now. One thing that I forgot to say is that this, this button, you can see it has two positions. Uh, this one is to power the screen and the other one is to charge the keyboard actually because this is a wireless Bluetooth keyboard. There is a tiny little cable right there and we can it can be pulled up through this hole and inserted into the keyboard so that it can charge from the, the power bank. <laughs> and the idea was that um, because there's only space enough for two buttons and there's only u two USB ports in the power bank. So the idea was that you would only be able to either use the screen or power uh, charge the keyboard. And both things could not be done at the same time. And of course this one, this keyboard doesn't have to be charged very often. I think I've only really charged it once since I bought it. But um, since this cable right here seems to power the screen without this one being set to its correct position, which is here, uh, I can charge the keyboard and, and power the display at the same time. Okay, so here you can see the um, the Ubuntu desktop. I had to re reboot it, restart it actually, because there's the, the desktop just didn't load. Uh, never happened before, but of course when I set out to start filming this thing, of course it decides to just fail. But anyway, here it is, and you can see the, the um, screen resolution is kind of low, but I guess it's there is probably some sort of settings for that somewhere in here. I haven't figured it out because I, I just recently installed Ubuntu on this thing and I don't really have any experience with it. But there's a web browser here and which is Firefox and I think guess this is the button you push when you have to get to some sort of apps gallery. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's a touch screen, so it's very nice and easy to navigate. And yeah, a lot of uh, kind of office apps here. I've actually used this thing before to do some work. I've paid bills on it and sent emails and um, and of course games. The keyboard, I forgot to turn it on. It's Bluetooth, uh, so it will automatically sync after a while. I guess now. Okay, let's try. Yep, escape button always works. I find the touchpad on this keyboard is not very good. Uh, it, it can be used, but I, I almost never do. So, because this is a touch screen and I got this mouse that I can hook up to it. And uh, I'm gonna do that now. So, there are two USB uh, 3 ports and, or th yeah, 3.1, I don't know, 3 at least, and one uh, USB. Two. So the mouse, I just always plug it into the USB 2 because it doesn't really need to. It doesn't really need more. anything more than that. Okay, so now I can actually use this computer as yeah a, a real <laughs> laptop. I think um, the total cost of all the parts, including the Raspberry Pi inside this yeah, and of course, including the, the case, which wasn't really expensive, um, is about uh, 250 US dollars. So it's not really it's not really that expensive. But of course, you can find cheaper laptops that you don't have to build yourself. But um, it's much more fun to build something like this. So it is connected to the internet. So I can go to, for example, youtube.com. I've also actually managed to watch Netflix on this one. So to take a look at inside uh, the box again, I can maybe try to give an explanation of what, what's happening here, even though it may be very obvious. But um, there's of course this display, which is just, it's not even glued to the case, it's just, it's just uh, taped. <laughs> but um, so this is the HDMI cable. I spend a lot of time trying to just pry off all the plastic from the outside of the cable so that it could easily, more easily bend in all directions to be able to put it inside this box at all because an HDMI cable is very thick. And um, this is the power cable. The power to the for the display comes out from here and it's soldered through this one, uh, which I cannot really show you right now. Maybe from the side. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, never mind, but... Um, and so it it's powers the screen, and this USB port is just going straight into the 
Raspberry Pi and so that why, that's why there are only three uh, USB ports here partly because there's no not enough space for anything more than that but um, one USB port is being taken up by the display and the rest of them are just yeah these three ports here and there's a there are extenders going from the USB ports on the board here and ending up there and it works like a charm and um, you can also see there's a fan <laughs> right there it, it's it's not attached to anything it's being held in place by all these cables this cable supplies the raspberry pi with power which is comes in down there you can see right there and this is uh, the hdmi of course because that is the thing the raspberry pi at least the raspberry pi 4 it, it uses a, a smaller version of an hdmi cable so you need an adapter for that to work, and it's—it's. It's, I think it's—it's. It's, they made it that way because uh, two normal-sized uh, HDMI ports would not fit on the Raspberry Pi, I guess. Um, the Raspberry Pi, as you probably know, it also have a, a network port, and I tried. I, I was originally thinking of putting a network input, like network port, on the side here. That's why this hole originally. That's what it was made for originally. Um, but there was not enough space to be able to do that and so this computer can only be used with Wi-Fi but it works very well. I was also thinking of putting a speaker into this box uh, because of course the Raspberry Pi does not come with a built-in speaker. So you can see here's another one uh, input for headphones or whatever. So there's a splitter inside here and uh, the idea was to put a speaker somewhere in here and plug it into here and so that you could choose between headphones or just a built-in speaker but in, there's not, not enough space so <laughs> it can't be done. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to uh, swap the S micro SD cards and try to boot it up from Raspberry Pi OS. So after a while when turning it off, when once this uh, no signal uh, message pops up it can be turned off. Okay, so now Raspberry Pi OS uh, micro SD card is inserted and Raspberry Pi OS is the OS I've been using most of the time on this computer. Okay, so this uh, Raspberry Pi OS will ask for a password, so I don't know if it yeah, it doesn't find the keyboard. Sometimes you have to kind of you have to turn it off on and off and it should find it automatically after a while. The thing is, if, if the keyboard suddenly stops working, there is no way to log into this thing because there's no soft keyboard or anything here that you can use. That's also probably one downside. But but of course you, you can you can configure Raspberry Pi OS to just boot right into the desktop so that you don't have to log in. But I, I don't know why I chose this. Okay, so I still haven't uh, managed to make um, the keyboard work with the uh, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi OS. I think it's because uh, since I installed uh, Ubuntu on the other SD card and connected the keyboard to that, I confused it. So it, it thinks that now this is another computer and it won't connect because it's it's another system. Uh, but I and I don't have a USB keyboard by the way, which I can just plug in. Uh, but I have this one, which is another wireless keyboard, but it's not Bluetooth, as far as I know at least. It has a USB thing behind here which I can just so now it's working as you can see if I click uh, the buttons it I can now type in my password okay so I certainly need to find a way to make this work in the future um, it would be much easier if this keyboard wasn't wireless but it's, it's really hard to find a keyboard which isn't especially at this size uh, but anyway this is uh, Raspberry Pi OS, and as you can see, there are a lot of more stuff going on here. So I've been using this a lot more. Uh, this one, for some reason, uh, it's having problems with the Wi-Fi. And also, as you can see, or you can't really see because you don't know what the time is, but I can show you, it's daytime. Uh, this one shows that it's afternoon, late afternoon, and um, that is because the Raspberry Pi don't know what the time is because it does not have an onboard clock. Uh, that is something I have ordered many months ago but still not received. Uh, the problem about the time not being correct, I guess that is the reason why it won't connect to the Wi-Fi or at least the, the web browser might be facing problems if it sees the system time is different 
from what the time really is. One thing you probably have no noticed now while I've been talking is Windows 98. <laughs> that is, uh, I, ha I had an idea when I made this computer that I wanted to make it boot into Windows 98 or I wanted to somehow install Windows 98 on this thing so that I could do, use it for retro gaming or yeah, such kind of things. I just find Windows 98 to be very nostalgic and yeah, I wanted it to be on here, but I, I didn't actually find a way to boot, be able to boot into it because you can't really natively run Windows 98 on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and I have seen people doing, finding smart ways to solve this on YouTube, but I'm not as smart <laughs> as them, so I can't do that. But I figured a way to install it uh, in DOSBox so that, okay, I'm just gonna plug the mouse in so that I can use it, uh, so that I can, um, run Windows 98 uh, like in DOSBox, like a, a yeah, guest system or yeah, emulated. And as you can see um, down here, you can see the temperature of the CPU. It really helps to have a fan uh, cooling down the CPU. Usually it would be at maybe at least 60 degrees Celsius right now. We just have to wait for Microsoft scan disk to complete. I guess I just didn't shut it down the correct way the last time I used it. Ah, look at that. So here you can see it's, uh, I don't know what's your network adapter. Yeah, okay. Uh, never mind. I don't think the network is working inside here anyway. So this is one of the problems that I'm having. I can't, uh, the, now the mouse is locked inside here and I can't release it. Um, because you have to, you have to actually push Control F10 to be able to do that. Um, problem here is that it doesn't work <laughs> when I push uh, the Fn button and F10. It's not releasing the mouse. Uh, so I'm stuck in Windows 98 right now. Uh, it isn't the worst thing to be stuck in, but of course you can't turn it on or turn it off. Okay. So Windows 98. Uh, there's nothing in here right now, so there's not really much I can do, but, uh... Yeah. I'm just gonna shut it off and see if it releases my mouse so that I can continue to use Raspberry Pi OS. Yeah, so I don't know if there's anything more uh, that I haven't showed you now uh, on this computer. I guess we've been through it all. If there's anything more you're wondering about, maybe you just leave a comment down in the comment section and I can... Uh, answer them uh, but yeah that's it uh, my homemade Raspberry Pi laptop